Rightio then, you lot, you bunch of scallywags. Who remembers this mower? Some of you might remember this mower. Um, I got it from that old bloke. It come with the instruction manual. I mean, it literally come with um, a, a spare spark plug. Um, you know, the old points, they put new points on it. I've got the instruction manual, I've got a bag of bits with it. Um, that was a very nice old dude, he was. He had it from brand new. Um, and this is a two stroke Tecumseh. Uh, they didn't make these very many in two strokes every place I went to because what happened was the big end bearing the bottom end bearing on the crank well it was non-existent there weren't even one there it had worn away and it was rattling it ran very well but it rattled on tick over um, so I went to various mower shops uh, both physically down you know drove there and had a look and also I went on the internet and had a look no what they said no that's not the right engine for that mower I said, are you sure? I said, it's never been changed. I said, the bloke I got it from has had it from brand new. He bought it a two-stroke on purpose because he wanted it so that he could use the same petrol with his hedge trimmer and his chainsaw as his lawnmower. And they were going, no, you can't get a, a two-stroke Mountfield um, emblem. Anyway, you, you can. They were just rare. Um, I found out they were just rare. So anyway... What, what happened was, uh, where am I going with this? So I, I fixed, I, I couldn't find a bearing anywhere. So what I done is I bought some, I just I just made a makeshift bearing up. Just to see if I could get it to run. And I, I, I know it probably wouldn't last. You know, it'd probably wear away, being not a proper bearing. But what I done is I got some copper sheeting and I made a bearing. Alright, it weren't even a, they're not bearings in here, they're um, shells. Anyway, I made one. And it ran okay but then what happened was I decided I thought I can get that a little bit better so I took it apart and I made I tightened up the bearing a bit more and then what happened was it got quite hard to turn over because I tightened it too much and one day I went to start it up and I pulled on the cord and I heard like um, a snapping sound and that won't start so what I think's happened is I think the keyway on the firewheel has snapped I that's what I think because when you put a pull start you're pulling on that which is trying to turn the engine over and I think the keyway snapped which is why it won't start because now all the timing's out so let's just have a look to see if we see if we've got that I did take the spark plug out to see if I could get the compression down to turn it over um, but I couldn't do that there's some mice droppings on there look there's old mice has been around here he has bloody hell I haven't caught any more mouses by the way, so I think they might be all gone, either that or they've got wires to the traps. They say mice are clever, don't they? I don't know. Anyway, let's get to work. Let's take this pull start off, and I need to take the flywheel off, and then we can see if the keyway snapped. And if it has, now let's try and get myself a new key. It's a woodruff key anyway, so. Right, let's do it. <laughs> right, so let's see what we got. I haven't really had a lot of. Uh, Oh, that's completely the wrong size. I haven't really had a lot of luck with um, the old camera gear recently, so hopefully this is all going to work all right. I wonder what we're going to find in here. You know what, I'm hoping it is just the keyway. I mean, I don't know what else can really cause them symptoms, like. Because it kind of just went snap, and then, um, you know... No, it won't start. So if the key, if that Woodruff key has sheared, then what will happen is the ignition timing will be out. So it won't be firing any spark or anything, you know, in time with the piston. So I do remember I lost, I lost one of the bolts. So I was just on when I was doing it. I mean, I do know the bearing that I made for this ain't going to be very good, you know, but I didn't, I, I wanted to sort of restore this mower and have it, have it so that it kind of worked a little bit. Um, I, I weren't intending on actually using it, like the hell, man. I weren't intending on actually using it, like, fully. I just wanted it so it ran, and it ran well. Keep it as like, um... You know, like, uh, 
a collector's thing. This is, you know, an old two-stroke, like. This is from the 80s. Well from the 80s, like. Now, I wonder if that's going to be too tight. Nope. Oh, there we go. That was lucky. Yeah, I can't remember what year. I think it was... Well, I think it was actually 1980 when this was made. Actually, on 1980. I have got the uh, the receipt. The bloke gave me the receipt when he bought it. I got everything off that bloke. He was a real nice old chap. Well, the key's in there, but whether it's... What's it? I don't know. Let's see if... Oh, I'll have to see if I've got the gear puller. Now, I found a flywheel puller. Now, whether it's going to be any good, I don't, I don't know, but... We'll tighten these down. I know them ones that got the washers and the nuts ran the wrong way. I know that, but it should do the job. I've got a socket that fits on it. It should do as a trick. There we go. That's that done. Now all I've got to do is loosen these off take that off bloody hot, do you know what, it's the, t the weather in England is very strange, you know it's like 2 degrees in the morning and throughout the day it gets up to like 20 degrees at the moment it's uh, very bizarre the old weather so, you know, you're, you're out there in the morning scraping your windows to get all the ice off. And then, um, during the day, you're sweating like a pig. If you're in a machine or a cab or something, you've got to have the air conditioning on all day long. And, you know, if you're outside, you're just sweating. And I, I, I'm in, like, shorts and a T-shirt, you know? And, um, yeah, very weird. Anyway, that's that. Right, what do we reckon, you lot? Do we reckon... That it's the old key, or do we think it's something else? Let's have a look. I think it's the key. Wow. It seems to be intact. That key seems to be perfectly intact. Huh. I wonder what that, that snapping sound was then. Well, you know what I'm going to have to do now then, don't you? I'm going to have to take off the back of the back again and check on that bearing. <sighs> the grass seed all over the place. Mouse. Mouse shit everywhere, dudes. They've been crawling all over this day, haven't they, mice? Yep. Grass seed everywhere. I wonder where they got all the grass seed from. No idea. Anyway, right. So we know our keys, all right. So put that over there. Put the key in there. Yeah, plug in there as well. All right. That's what the top of that looks like, by the way, in case you've never seen it. So now what I've got to do is take the back off. Um, take the back of that engine off. I've got to take the engine out to do that, so... Take the engine out, take the back off, and see what, what we've got going on in there. Who knows, eh? Could be anything. Well, what I managed to do was I managed to get the... I managed to get, I took the carb off and I could take the back of the engine off, take the reeds out. Now I've noticed there was a little bit of grass sort of on the back of the reeds there, which I thought was a bit bizarre. That shouldn't be in there. I didn't even cut any grass with it, but there we go. Never mind, that's the way it is. So I can see in there how uh, much of it you're going to be able to see. You know, I've got a socket on there. Oh. 
that all seems all right in there. Then bolts ain't come loose, you know, it all spins freely. I wouldn't say it was particularly hard to turn. Um, so I think that's all right. I don't know what caused that snapping sound. Um, you know, the engine turns over fine. It weren't running when it made it. I just went to pull it and it pulled, it went snap. Um, but then I could keep pulling it and it was turning over fine, no trouble. It just wouldn't start. Even with uh, even with a bit of bit of bit of spray in there, it wouldn't even it wouldn't fire. So I just assumed that the the key had snapped. Get that knife in there. I assumed that the key had snapped, or uh, sheared, or whatever you want to say. Um, and so it was all out of whack, but that ain't the case. So a bit more investigation to do. I'm going to be looking around, seeing what else I can do. Um, well, I'll tell you what I'll probably do is I'm going to put it all back together because it's been nearly a year now since this happened. I'm going to put it now. I know that that is all right in there because I was wondering after I, after I see that the key was all right, I was wondering whether um, one of them bolts had come loose or whatever because I had been running it for a, you know, I probably got about half an hour's worth of running on it with that little with that since I put it back together, and I thought ah oh, maybe it's come loose or whatever and you know. Um, but I know, I know they're all right. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put it all back together now, and I'm going to pull it over and see if it will start and see what happens. Um, see, make sure we still got plenty of spark and all that, and we'll go from there. I think. All right, back together. Hopefully that's a good enough earth. Let's see. Have we got spark? I can't see the plug from here. But, um, you tell me, have we got any spark? It was all right. I'll put that on there. There we go. That's a look. Oh, hold on. Not touching. It was there a minute ago. I didn't see a spark, but I heard it crack on the first pull when I asked you. Look, can you see it? Should be touching it now. Oh, yeah, I saw it that time. It's definitely there. Right, let's put the plug in and we'll see what happens from there. Uh, don't know what's going to happen. Hopefully, it'll start. Right, a little bit limited for space at the moment, but um, you can see that. See what I'm going to do. Have I got any? Have I got any? I haven't got none. I'll have to see if it'll start without any, any sprayage. Right. Here we go. Whoa, what was that noise? I think that noise, that scraping noise, is um, a pulled start. Now what have I got that's flammable? What have I got that's flammable? I can't really spray that in there. That's flammable. Right. Spray a bit of that in there, that's flammable. I don't know if I can really get it in there, right? Like. Got the choke open. I don't really think. That's made it in there, but we'll try it. Huh. Hang on about. I'll get something a bit more flammable. I tell you what, remember when I was looking for all this, I remember seeing some easy start or some damp start or whatever it was. That's his engine oil on it. Damp start. Sure starting for wet engines. Uh, I don't think it's um sure damp start. Start overcomes. 
a problem of wet weather starting. It repels water and provides a high level of corrosion protection for up to two years. Damp start is particularly suited for the protection against the effects of salt water and road spray. Spray it on distributor in high tension needs. Well, ain't no good. Oh, um, oh I saw something else. Brake fluid. Super seal. <laughs> yeah. Well clean then. Oh. Is it flammable? Oh look, extremely flammable. That might work, but that's a foam, isn't it? No, oh, that's a foam, that ain't no good. What's this stuff? Tire shine. Oh well, I thought I saw some easy start, but it was damp start. Oh well, never mind. Right. <laughs> I'll tell you what I have got. Um, but I'm not going to about get it in the carb, so I'm just going to spray it straight in the old, in the hole. Stick it straight in the hole, right? Zippo lighter fluid, look, that'll do the job. That's bloody flammable. Uh, that should, uh, that should do the trick. Now, some of you probably think, why don't you just stick a bit of pepper in there? Well, I ain't got anything that's any good for... There you go. Plenty of that in there. I ain't got anything that's any good to put the petrol in, like to spray it in, so I'll just uh, do this. Stick that on there. Right. Let's see what's going to happen now. Probably go bang. <laughs> Well, that wants to go, doesn't it? I wonder. Hold on, I've got another idea. I wonder if we've got petrol trouble. I don't know what way round that valve is. That wanted to run, that did. That did want to run. There's the petrol tank. Nothing coming out. There's petrol. Oh, there it goes. There's petrol. Off. On, off, on. Right. So, right, -o, right. Got a plan then. Let's spray some of this. Now this is um, switch cleaner. It's flammable though. A little bit. So let's get the old tube and spray some of that in there. to go huh. nearly Well, that's going to run well, that is, when that does go. So what I need to do then, sort out the fuel line. We've got a bit of a fuel in trouble, I think. Right, what I'm going to do, you lot, I'm going to disappoint some of you. When my camera battery is literally on dying, it's flashing at me. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to wrap it up for tonight. Um, but now I know, and we know, that, that is, there's not a trouble there. The keyway's fine, it's firing, it, there's timing's all on. I still don't know what that noise was that I heard um, a year ago. 
Um, that I know every now and again you can hear like a snapping scraping sound that is I think it's because there's a bolt missing but I think what it is on here um, where the pull start goes in that sometimes scrapes along the uh, you know the casing I have to sort that out but that's not the priority right now the priority is to get it to run and run stably so I think that valve's a little bit slow so I'm going to clean that petrol tank up and try and see if I can maybe a bit of dirt in the valve um, take the line off um, I did clean the carb out last year when I rebuilt the engine I say rebuilt, rebuilt when I took it apart put that bearing in it um, so yeah it might be sticky but there's obviously a fuel in trouble somewhere so yeah that's what I'm going to do on the next video there'll be another video coming up obviously of this but we got there we, you know, we, got, we got a fair way didn't we if it weren't for the fact the battery was running out I'd carry on but there we go so I'll catch you on the next one dudes um, I'm going to go on, on the radio for a bit for the rest of this evening it's getting on now time's getting on so thanks for watching really appreciate you being here but you know let me know in the comments if you if you like these type of videos because some of you may come here for the CB radio and all that but for those of you who know I do all kinds of stuff um, so the winter's coming on so I might better get loads of mowers cheap again now because in the summer I was looking around to buy mowers but bloody hell the prices man people are trying to sell a non-running mower for like 20 quid and I'm like fuck oh fucking hell what's going on you know I picked them up this one here this Mountfield one I can't remember the exact price but I think it was about eight pounds or something like that you know um it was a runner but non-runner because of the trouble with it but I, you know you go and buy them for like a couple of quid but prices are too high and I ain't doing it but the winter coming people selling off their mowers because they ain't got to cut their grass you never know what I'll be able to get so stick around you lot thanks for watching really appreciate it and uh just enjoy yourselves won't you look after yourselves you lot take care